תשומת לב הציבור שבמשך 1,900 שנה עם ישראל היה בגלות ונרדף והשאירו אותו בהפצת מחנות וכך התפתחה אנטישמיות The residents of the neighborhood of Meir Sharim are in a battle with the police. While the entire country has been on lockdown, some parts of Israel's ultra-Orthodox or Haredi community have refused to comply. And now, they're the epicenter of the nation's outbreak. It's estimated that they account for half of COVID-19 hospitalizations, though they make up just 10% of the population. The most extreme communities have continued to clash with police. They've also resisted efforts to close religious schools and places of worship. This is called the police takeover. It's a war against God, and that's the story. Oh, I'll show you. Come, 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 come. What Zionism likes to do to Jewish people, they break out our windows, like Romans and like Greeks. And come on over, come, let's go. They say we're all sick with, uh, with the disease, but I don't know one person that's died. So see that? You got that? See that? So this is what they've been doing for the last month, terrorizing us. Security cameras have captured multiple incidents of police allegedly attacking residents of the neighborhood. The police came and they were shooting flash bombs and they came to a minion of 10 Jews that were all spread out so they wouldn't get the disease if there is such a thing, if it's not 5G and all this. And they, um, there was an old man that couldn't run out in time and they took him, they beat him up, they broke his head open and they broke his thigh bone. And uh, then when they sent him to the hospital, they put him in a Corona Mechlecha. In the ultra-religious neighborhoods, police are emphasizing getting the message out because the neighborhoods are very closed and very isolated. People inside those neighborhoods don't have phones. They're not online 24-7. They're not updated on what's going on in Twitter. They are completely not connected. Misinformation is one part of why the Haredi community has become a hotspot for the virus. The health minister, who himself is ultra-Orthodox, is also accused of ignoring his own social distancing guidelines, which he denies. Earlier this month, he contracted coronavirus, sending many of the country's top officials into isolation, including the prime minister. In Mayor Sharim, even those that want to adhere to the government guidelines can't always do so. The neighborhood is so densely populated that social distancing can be difficult, even at home. Yoel Kraus shares his two-room apartment with his wife and family. As Yoel and his wife prepare for Passover and the start of a nationwide curfew, many families rush to grocery stores to do the same. We're doing everything possible on a national level. Both the Israeli National Police, Border Police, Special Patrol Units who are around 24-7 endangering themselves in order to make sure that the public is safe. Those interventions are viewed with suspicion, as is the presence of outside media. Oh. 
תיגע בי, אסור לך לגעת בי. אתה אל תיגע בו. Don't touch me, לא נגעתי בו, אתה נגעת בי. אף אחד לא נגע בו. אני לא נגעתי בו, נגעת בי. תסריט אותו, תסריט אותו. תחזר הפנים שלך, תסריט אותו. למה אתה נוגע בי? The press is so distrusted that at one point, a metal rack Last week, the government controversially sealed off Maya Sharim and other ultra-orthodox neighborhoods in an effort to contain the virus. Riots erupted as angry residents hurled objects at police. On a nearby street, officers responded with a stun grenade which injured a nine-year-old girl who was walking with her family. Inside these communities, incidents like this add to the feeling that these measures go beyond prevention and threaten their way of life. So we have our Torah. This is the truth. We can't go to the laws of the state. לפני 300 שנה היה מגפה, ואז הרבנים פסקו שחייבים להתפלל במניין עד 15 איש, אפילו במגפה ואפילו שיש הדבקה. מה שהשם ציווה אותנו, זה מה שאנחנו עושים, לא זה מזה מילימטר. 